Happy Christmas. <laughs> and you're all going, I think it's a bit too early for that. Well, the reason I say that for is because my uh, initial text that I want to kind of uh, bring what I have to say today is taken from the Christmas story. And is Matthew chapter 2 and verse 2. And hopefully it will come up on the, um, the screen behind us. And it says, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to be worshipped. No. We have come to worship, yes? You see, these wise men did not come for what they were going to get from God. They didn't come because there was something in it for them. They came to give. They came to worship. And these were wise men who had followed the star. Uh, they were looking for Jesus. I want to say to you, wise men today still follow Jesus. They still look for Jesus. They still seek Jesus. And they still worship him. And so worship is a very core aspect of us when we give our life to Jesus. We are worshippers, yes? And so I just want to bring and look at a couple of aspects uh, today, depending on how time goes, um, that, are, that are not maybe things that we normally look at in terms of our worship. And, uh, and so I want to look at particularly about our posture for worship, because posture matters, doesn't it? Yes? In other words, if I was to, to meet with you and I was to put my fists up, that you would think to yourself, okay, this guy's friendly. In other words, the way posture, if you can, just the way that you walk, the way that you enter a room, if your arms are open and to, to, to welcome or you put your hand out to shake someone's hand, your posture Say something, doesn't it? I mean, you've probably seen it with the royalty that were going around, uh, the people, and there was one a member of the royalty who didn't shake hands with anybody that I was aware of. Um, he was friendly. Um, he, he held his hands kind of close to himself and was talking. But although the people were putting their hand out to shake his hand, uh, he'd never shook a hand. He might have shaken one that he maybe he couldn't get out of, but he was... Where the rest of the royalty, they were all shaking hands, weren't they? Yes? And, uh, and so, so in other words, our posture matters. What we do with our hands matters, doesn't it? Yes? Uh, so in other words, if, if, um, if when you saw the, the, the queen was lying in state and uh, people were coming, they had queued for hours for a moment in, in her presence, as it were, and to, they, to pay their last respects, and so they, all of them, chose a posture. And so for each of them, chose a posture. I, I, I remember seeing one guy, and uh, he come in kind of uniform, and uh, he'd got his beret on, and, uh, and he stood in front of it, and he, and he went back again, and then he went back again. I thought, how many times is he going to go back? And then he saluted. And he went. In other words, his posture spoke volumes, didn't it? And when we come to worship our king, the king of all kings, posture matters. Does it not? So when you and I come on a Sunday morning to worship, when we worship in our private place, when we worship in our connect group, posture matters. And I want to just to encourage you to think about your posture. Think about how you respond on a Sunday morning, yes? Because I want to say to you, we, we are all the time being an example for others to follow. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, for me, for example, for raising hands was not an easy thing to do. I wasn't brought up particularly with a lot of arm raising kind of stuff. I'm quite a reserved kind of guy, really. Uh, but it was really when I went to Bible college and some of the people there were experienced, and they were, they were like, you know, and, and dancing and all this kind of stuff. And I'm thinking... Not me. <laughs> I, was, I was rather wooden, um, to say the least, and um, Kath can testify that uh, when we first started courting. Um, <laughs> rather, rather wooden, 
So you maybe want to call me Woody from now on. Um, but, uh, but, but, but posture matters. And so I've just got a quick um, uh, video to show you of a guy that maybe you've seen before. If you haven't, then introduce you to it. He is a comedian. And uh, I thought that locally, when there was a local restaurant opened and Faith was keen to go there, I thought it was named after this guy, but of course I was mistaken. So the local restaurant is called Tim Horton, yes, that's right, Tim Horton, which is a glorified McDonald's, really. But anyway, um, uh, but, but he, his name is Tim Hawkins. So you might want to look that up in YouTube after you've seen this. So he's just going to talk a little bit about hand raising in church. Enjoy. And I know that each church has its own worship style, you know, which is cool. Some people are more expressive in worship, some people more subtle, and it's all good. Um, I go to a church that's pretty expressive in worship. It's, um, it's a hand raising church. That's what it is, right? That's what, you know, anybody here go to a hand raising church? Anybody here? Sweet. Who here does not go to a hand raising church? Some of you are trying, you're like, I can't. <laughs> I want to, Tim. I need to get some momentum. <laughs> totally cool. But hey, if you're not used to going to a hand-raising church, you want to go and join us, feel free to join us, but don't feel like you've got to join right in, okay? Start slow. we got a lot of different hand-raises that we use. We actually have names for our hand-raises. So I'm going to walk you through real quick, okay, what they are, just to let you know. Say you're at my church, music is rocking. Start slow, hands in the pockets, little elbow flap, you're fine. <laughs> Very subtle, get warmed up, get your heart rate up. When you're warmed up, start with the first one. Ready, carry the TV. Carry the TV, that's our first one. Very subtle. Go to big screen, big screen, a little wider. Next one's my fish was this big, my fish was this big. If you're a liar, you can go out there, that's fine, don't worry about it. Jesus loves you, Grace. Next one's hold my baby, hold my baby. Got dueling light bulbs. That's our next one, dueling light bulbs. We got goalpost. Everybody knows goalpost. Throwing a heartburn. A lot of people like to do heartburn. Double heartburn, right back to goalpost. What's my favorite? Mufasa. Mufasa, that's my favorite. The circle of life. Tim, can you go higher? Yes, you can. You can take one hand, go a bunch of different stuff. Pointer, hatchet, schoolroom. Release the doves, give the Lord a high five. Press it out. A lot of women like to wash the window. Wash the window. And when you're comfortable there, go for the big three. Village people, Rocky, touchdown. There you go. There's your Yes, there you go. So now, <laughs> uh, next Sunday you'll all be going, what should you do? What are they doing? <laughs> um, so, but the key is expression. The key is posture, isn't it? Posture matters, and he's, he quite clearly showed in a com comical way that actually each of the actions can mean something different. Can't it? You know? And so it is important for us to really, uh, to uh, be aware of that, and I want us to be able to learn, to actually to uh, learn that uh, the, the way we respond to God matters. And, uh, and, and so we can so often, we can do things, we can pray, and we can worship, and we can have our hands in our pockets, but that says something. Now, that's not to say if you have your hands in your pockets at, at, at any one time that you're, you're kind of sinning. But it, what I'm saying is, is that our posture reflects our heart, doesn't it? Uh, the, way, the way we are, if, you, if you're a married couple, how you respond to one another, posture matters. And so I believe it's so important for us uh, to, to understand that. Psalm 63, and the first four verses when David is in the wilderness at this point, and he's hit a low point in his life, and this is what he says when he cries out to God. He says, you, God, 
are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. In other words, if you're at a low point, you need to do what David does, uh, David did, and you need to point your life at him and earnestly seek him. Verse 2 says, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. The love of God is better than life. Why? Because it never fails, because it is eternal. It's going to last for all eternity. My love doesn't last very long, but God's love is eternal. And he says, my lips will glorify you. And then this he says, he says, I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will have my hands in my pockets. What does it say? I will lift my hands in your name. There's a lifting of hands in the name of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? And that's wonderful to know that when we're praising him and we lift our hands, we're lifting it in the name of Jesus. You know, you can't experience the grace and the love and the kindness of God without showing some kind of gratitude. It's God to show. If you really appreciate what God has done for you, it is going to reflect on how you respond to God. Now, Paul gives Timothy some instructions on worship. And he's talking about, this is how you should worship me. Because you've got to remember that before Paul uh, became a Christian, before he had an encounter with God, he hated Christians. He was a persecutor of Christians, yes? And, uh, and would do anything to see them killed. And this is what he, Paul writes to Timothy and says to them, Therefore, I want the men... He's talking to you guys. I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. And now he's speaking to the guys. And but often I find as guys, we are the last to do this. Our pride, we don't feel comfortable, we kind of think it's out of our comfort zone, we feel awkward, whatever it might be. But I believe that God wants us men to set the standard of worship. I believe, you know, as guys, we want to be the leader so often in the household. But I want to say to you, God says to be the leader, you need to be like Christ. To be the leader, you set the example in worship. You show what it is to have hands raised. You know what it is to bow the knee. That our wives and our children can see a father and a husband who loves God with all their hearts. It's example that, that they're seeing what God is wanting to do, that we actually will do that. I want to say to you, God is looking for people and he's looking for men who will seek his face and set the tone in the house, set the tone in the church. Amen. Can you imagine Sunday morning, just imagine it for a moment, that we come in here Sunday morning and all the guys are praising God and going hallelujah and singing with gusto. Can you imagine it? Can you imagine it? Because that's the difference it would make. Because I want to say to you, our wives and our children, they would follow willingly to guys who raise their hands to Jesus. I'm telling you because there's a love. Because we are called. We, we, we guys are good at quoting scripture when it suits us, don't we? We always say to our wives, you know what the word of God says? You are to submit to your husband. Don't we? But actually that verse isn't written to the men. That's written to the wives. To the guys, it says, you need to love your wife as Christ loves the church. Now, I think when the guys love their wives like Christ loves the church, they'll have no problem submitting. Will they? Because that's what we've got to do. So guys, I know I'm going easy on you girls today. Okay, you're next week. But... <laughs> But all I'm saying to you is, is guys, we are, we are called to set an example. 
and to be people, instead of raising our hands uh, in anger, in, in, instead of raising our hands in dispute, instead of raising our, our hands in a selfish way, let us raise our hands to the King of Kings and raise them in praise and worship to the one who we owe everything to him. Amen. You know, James 4 verse 8 says, draw near to God and he will what? He will draw near to you. You see, when I raise my hands to God, I realize I can't reach God. He's higher than I am. But you know what? He reaches down for me. When my children, when Faith and Nadine were small, they used to regularly, particularly the smaller they were, uh, even, well, Nadine even now, but anyway... Um, but uh, but, they, but they, they put their hands up. All your children put their hands up to their parents. What are they doing? They're wanting, they're wanting you to pick them up, are you? They're wanting you to show your love to them. They're wanting you to, to pick them up and to hold them. Now as parents go on, you try, no, 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 no. You need to learn to stand on your own two feet and you kind of... But all I'm saying to you, God loves it. When we cry out to him and we say, God, I need you. God, I, I want just to be in your arms. I just want you to involve, pick me up, lift me up, God, because we're aware of who he is. I think that is so important to us. Is that not right? Yes. In other words, we can offer praise with our hands just as we do with our money. Yeah. And, and you, you know, I know you don't believe me. I can see it. Psalm 141, verse two verses says there, Oh, Lord, I am calling to you. Please hurry. Listen when I cry to you for help. Accept my prayer as incense offered to you and my upraised hands as an evening offering. When we raise our hands to God, we are giving him an offering. That do not cost you anything, guys. Yeah, if you're a Yorkshireman or you're a Scotsman, or whatever, then you're free. Free. Offering, hey, that's got to be worth doing, hasn't it? Yes. But don't worry, I'm going to be talking about finances soon. <laughs> It'll be empty. Anyway. But all I'm saying to you is we do need to offer our praise to God by reaching out to him. I think another reason that we lift our eyes is to declare that we are in a battle and what we need God's help. And we see this particularly in Exodus uh, chapter 17. The Amalekites um, are attacking the Israelites. And, um, and Moses says to Joshua, I'm going to go up the mountain, choose some men to go to fight these Amalekites. Um, but I'm going to go up the mountain, and I'm going to take a couple of guys with me. And so he takes him, he takes Aaron, and he takes her. I don't know if it was Ben Hur, but he takes her. And um, H U R. And, um, and so they, they go up the mountain. And what you find with them is, is and I'll, I'll read this in verse 10, 11. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. In other words, winning, losing. Winning, losing. Okay. Who wants to be a winner? <laughs> some of you want to be a winner, and some of you don't believe that raising your hands to God will make a difference. But I'm just saying to you, it is. Now, the reason some of you didn't raise your hands is because you're, you're not hand raisers, are you? You're like he, Timothy, you'd have to, you'd have to work at it. <laughs> but there's something, there's something liberating about just being able to be yourself in the presence of God. But for all of us, there is some inbuilt things within us that we know as children, we can see it as children, that there's, there's an important thing. And so when we're in a battle, and this was important to them, that, that actually wasn't just about praying, but posture mattered. And I want to say to you that maybe today you are in a battle. Maybe today you're in a circumstances, maybe it's financial, it might be a health battle, it might be anything. I want to say to you, the best way to fight your battle is to raise your hands and say, God, I need your help. God, I'm raising my hands to you in praise and worship, but I'm saying, Lord, I recognize I'm in a battle today and I need your help. That is worth it, isn't it? It's worth doing that, right? So if you're a little bit shy about doing it in here, do it at home and nobody's looking. But do it with 
uh, with, with sincerity because he sees your, ha- um, your heart. And so it is important to that. So verse 12 goes on about Moses' hands growing tired and they, they, uh, they, they had to hold his hands up. And I believe that that's so important to us is to realize that sometimes you don't just need God's help, you actually need some people around you to help you. Need them to help you worship. You need them to hold your hands up. You need them to be able to kind of, come on, Jonathan, you can do it. And, and we've had that. Kath and I have had that in our church, numerous uh, people. I mean, obviously, one of the, the, the ones that you're probably aware of, but is Devation and Tracy, for 21 years when they came, have served, have stayed, have been faithful, have encouraged, have kept on saying, Jonathan, keep doing it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So you, we all need that. Because there are always times for all of us we think, I can't do it. I'm no good. I'm a failure. This isn't happening. I thought this was what God would do. And we all go through those things, but that's why connect group is so important. That's why having friends around you is so important that can, that can be with you, can pray with you, and they can hold your hands up. They can be with you in your, in your battle, whatever the battle is that you've got. Amen? I believe that that is so important for us today. And so we have victory when we praise him. And I think what's interesting is that not only is uh, raising hands a sign of victory. So I don't know if you've ever been to a football match or seen a football match. I mean, in all fairness, you can see any sport, can't you? But when there's a goal or there's, 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 they've got points, whatever it might be, they, they, when, when they've won something, they don't go, oh, that was all right. Well, you know, better next time. Yeah? Not only the people playing, but the, the fans, they go, yes! Even Edith, Middlesbrough. <laughs> Middlesbrough t- um, Edith took me to Middlesbrough football games occasionally. And, uh, and, and the score, if Middlesbrough scored, which I know is a rare thing, but anyway, they <laughs> whenever... <laughs> I'm going to get lynched afterwards, aren't I? Um, they... they she, she would run down. Well, I mean, it's just a sight. To, I just wish I had it in video. Because if I had, it would have been there. Because, <laughs> you know, in this church, we don't, um, we don't blame, uh, name and blame. But we do show and tell. <laughs> okay, there you are. I can see that didn't go down very well. But, uh, but not only is it victory, but there is surrender. And when you're in a battle, surrender matters, isn't it? If you're not on the winning side, if you're... A, you're a I want to say to you, when we surrender to God, then he fights for us. So when we raise our hands to God, it's both victory and surrender simultaneously. Isn't that fantastic? To know that when I surrender to him, i am also got hands of victory. Because God is wanting us to be a people of victory. Do you not want to be like that? Amen? I, I believe so. I believe God wants to do that. So I want us next Sunday... Um, and in your connect group and throughout this week to put this into practice. Do you think you could do that? Just to give it a go and see if your hands will raise above the shoulder. See if it will, how high you can get your hands. But I want to say to you, if you'll do that, I was going to talk about bowing the knee, but t- t- time's gone. If you will bow the knee, if you will raise your hands, if you will have a posture of prayer and praise and adoration and surrender, I want to say to you, you will see victories in your life that you never, ever thought were possible. But it comes from a heart of, 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 uh, uh, of wanting to, to please God. And just like the wise men, when we come to worship, it's not what's in it for us. We worship because of who he is. Now, he has done all sorts of things, and he is he's always going to bless him. He, he's going to do some amazing things. But what really matters is that we understand that we are here for him. That so many of us, We give our life to Christ because of what's in it for us, don't we? And and we're looking to kind of think to ourselves, well, I wonder if I I worship God, then I might uh, be able to do this and get that and whatever and that. So we kind of see God sometimes like a Santa Claus God. Or if we're in trouble, we we go to him because we think he's like a fire engine God. He's going to come and put the fire out in our life. But what we've got to understand is that worship is about him. And we are called to worship. 
We are called to please God. You are created for God's pleasure, not your own pleasure. We are created in order to honor God, not so that we are honored. Now, often we honor each other, and it's lovely to be able to do that, but the reason when we do honor some, we are honoring what God has done in their life. We are honoring. And, and so this is why when we, uh, when we um, uh, are with each other and our attitude to each other and our posture to each other should reflect to each other that that person is created in the image of God. They are precious to God, and therefore we need to honor that. So there's an honoring each other, but there's more than anything is honoring God. Let's put him first, shall we? Shall we just allow him to become first? Now you might think, well, I went to church and all they said about putting his hands up. And to a certain extent, that's right. But I want to say to you, if you can learn this posture of raising your hands or kneeling or whatever it might be, of just expressing to God how you would, if you, you know, if you imagine you're in a winning team and you've just scored a goal, worship him like that. Yeah. When you're excited, when something's gone right, when you're all kind of thing, you have to, you, you, what's inside comes out. So if you're depressed, it shows on your face, doesn't it? If you're depressed, your shoulders sunk and you kind of go, and you're going around, a bit like what I'm doing normally, but anyway, but, but you, you, you know what I'm trying to say? So think about that posture. I mean, posture matters in everything. Just smiling. Just try smiling. It's amazing how much, if you smile at somebody else, they smile back, it's quite reciprocal. But I'll tell you what, it will do your mental health good just to smile. Because it changes your disposition. Just, just try, you might want to try it. Just putting your shoulders back, just taking a deep breath and a big smile, and you'll think, I feel better already. So in other words, posture matters. And if you're with any, any physical health kind of things, if, uh, if Tracy gets hold of you, she'll be on about your, your, your posture, and how you walk and your back and your shoulders. and yeah. In other words, it matters. But I want to say today that spiritually it matters. And God is interested in how you come to him. Not just the fact that you turn up. It's how you respond to him in worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.